So, 2023 travel plans. But I would have to think, why would I go there, you know? And how would I do it? I'm thinking about the idea of daily vlogging. Couldn't believe how many we sold. You haven't seen these videos yet because they're coming and then I'm gonna commit and I'm gonna put that down in my diary and we're gonna go to there. That's my goal. Stop being a miserable bastard. <laughs> Everybody, how are you? I hope you had a good new year. I thought for a change we could sit down together and sort of plan the next year. I want to set some personal goals, some targets for the channel as well, and outline where we're going to be traveling. I have this Google slide document and there's only five slides or something, so we'll just go through and we'll kind of treat this video as like a mini podcast almost and just yeah overview 2022 make a plan for the year for me as a person and for the channel and for the brand of next level adventures as well i think it's important sometimes you can get lost up in everything sometimes you don't know where you are it becomes a bit of a whirlwind especially the world of social media it can certainly feel like you're just in a washing machine and you're always just chasing the next video or whatever so I think it's time we sat down and we made a bit of a plan and we tried to regain a little bit of structure to this channel. And it's also good because you guys can see what I'm planning so you'll know what to expect this year. And it's gonna be quite exciting. So it says here, the plan. Okay, what is the plan? Well, um, I think quickly we'll just spend one slide recapping 2022 because it was an amazing year and it's kind of shaped where the channel is right now because I worked really, really hard in 2022. So let's quickly just have a look at last year. So in the first quarter, we finished exploring Bangkok. I spent the whole month of January making videos in Bangkok. So much content to be made there. I mean, you could literally, and many channels do, just base themselves in Bangkok full time because that city is so vibrant, so colorful, there's so much food, there's so many experiences, there's so much culture, and I just love Bangkok. So I spent a good month there and making lots of content. And then I went off and I finished the eastern provinces. So we went down to Pattaya, we went down to Rayong, we went down to Trat, Ko Kud, Ko Chiang, we went to all of the beautiful paradise islands down there. And then we came back to Bangkok and we met up with Michael and Miss P and we did a road trip to Phuket and that's when at the very end of quarter one last year we finished the 77 provinces and we had a big party at Maybell Coffee Garden and celebrated the achievement of 77 provinces and then after a little break in Phuket we flew to Hanoi and we did the Vietnam series. That took three months to film and it was an incredible journey from start to finish on Super Dreamy. And I loved every minute of it. The highlight was the Hai Zhong loop. And the, the more south we went, the more difficult it became. But that was just, I think, fatigue. And obviously Vietnam is a varied country. And uh, looking back, I enjoyed the adventure. And I hope you enjoyed that series. It was. It was great to make and I hope yeah, like you enjoyed it. And then in quarter three, we came back to Thailand briefly and I bought a motorcycle. I brought Zelda, my brand new Honda CT125. And then we took her to Northern Thailand. We went on a short road trip just to kind of test her out and see if she was road trip worthy, which she wasn't, but we, we changed things around and we added some modifications and then I think we've got her in a good place. She's still not perfect. I don't think she ever will be. But then we left her on the border of Laos and I had to take a trip home. And I went um, on a little vacation for about a week to Paris with Miss P, my girlfriend. I went to Belgium to see my friends and I went to England to see my family. And I got to see my grandmother um, and thankfully, uh, when I went to visit my grandmother, um, she was feeling good, she was feeling well, and I got to spend two or three weeks um, hanging out with my mum and my grandma and all my uncles and aunties. 
Um, sadly, my grandmother did just recently pass, just after New Year's. Um, no, it was before Christmas, actually. The funeral was just the other day, so yes. Um, rest in peace, Grandma Ramsey. You were an amazing grandmother, and I'm so glad I got to see you um, before you went into a better place. So um, that was a really nice thing to do, actually, to go home. In quarter four, we began the Lost in Laos series. I was really nervous. You know, series three is always the most difficult series because the first one is new and exciting, and then you can improve it on the second series, and then the third series, people might start to get bored of you um, or the concept, and I was really nervous. Um, and views went down a little bit, I will admit. Um, whether that's because it wasn't as good, Laos isn't as popular, or a combination of many things, I don't know. <laughs> um, but the, the videos, I'm really proud of and that series is fantastic uh, and it was it was a pleasure to make. After Laos we briefly came back in to Thailand to see Ryan and we did the farm stay and I did a bunch of boring admin stuff and then we went to Cambodia. You haven't seen these videos yet because they're coming. Uh, they, the first episode will begin on this channel in five days and we are going to be cruising Cambodia. We'll go to Siem Reap, we'll explore Angkor Wat, we'll go to Phnom Penh, we'll go down to the coast and we'll have a great time. And I can't wait for you to see those videos. I'm still in the process of editing them now. And um, I backlogged a lot of footage so that I could take January off um, because quarter one of 2023, guys, is me kind of taking a little bit of time away from being on the road and working on some of the behind the scenes things which we'll get into in the channel goals and targets. So yeah, that was quite the year in 2022. So 2023 travel plans. Where are we going and when will we go there? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> if, by the way, you are planning a trip in 2023, wherever you're planning to go to, you might need to start thinking about learning a little bit of the local language just to help you with the day to day Maybe you want to communicate with the locals easier and order food or just, you know, make sure you don't get lost or just sort of break that barrier between you and the local population. And if you are thinking about learning a language, then I highly recommend the one that I've been using recently and the sponsor of this video, Rosetta Stone. Let me just quickly show you the basic first lesson so you can see how the lessons are laid out. It's really cool. Hola. 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 That's a really easy example, right? But it gets harder. Una niña. Un niño. Una niña. So this one, you just have to choose like which is the correct term. Una niña, which means little girl or a girl. La niña bebe. El niño bebe. Eating? The kid eating, right? Oh. El niño come. When you do make a mistake like that, <laughs> you just press this button here and it will give you the translation for you. So, el niña bebe is the girl is drinking and la niña come is the girl is eating. So that's how, sort of through trial and error, you learn the language. You can use Rosetta Stone to communicate with locals in the area that you're visiting. You can feel more confident traveling to these less touristy focused areas because you'll be able to speak a little bit of the native language. Well, you could speak a lot if you spend a lot of time on this app, trust me. Being able to speak just a little bit of the local language gives you so much more confidence in asking for directions, understanding their responses, and, you know, just navigating a chicken bus in Peru, or maybe just communicating with the locals in Japan trying to order some food. Using Rosetta Stone to learn some of the basics is a really great way to just make traveling less scary. If you're wondering, by the way, what languages can you learn? You can obviously learn Spanish, which is the one I decided, English. So if you're trying to learn English, guys, Rosetta Stone is a fantastic app. French, Italian, German, Arabic, Chinese, 
Filipino, Hebrew, Hindi, just go on the app, you'll see all of the different ones that they have. And because you've watched this video, you're getting access to this amazing deal. A lifetime subscription down from $299 to $179. That's a discount of over $100 and a lifetime subscription. A lifetime of access to Rosetta Stone and all of their languages. Plus, if you don't enjoy the service or the app, then there is a 30-day refund policy. So check it out, it's a fantastic deal. So if you are going on a trip in 2023, consider Rosetta Stone. It's a great way to get a base level of the local language and prepare yourself for your future trip. Check out the description and the pinned comment below for more information. And thank you to Rosetta Stone for sponsoring this part of the video. These are some countries that I would love to go to, okay? This is my bucket list. If I could, I'd go to all of these countries next year, or this year, I should say, but it's obviously not possible. In an ideal world, I would go to at least three countries this year and travel and make a next level adventure. Malaysia, you know, makes sense. Geographically, it's close by to where my audience are most interested in. Lots of food, lots of culture. Uh, Indonesia, massive country. And I've been watching, Steve-O was here. Um, he went over there recently to try and learn Indonesian, a great series, I'll link it below. And that really opened my eyes just to the scale of Indonesia. It's not just Bali, you know what I mean? It's so much more. And I think that would be a great place to go on a motorcycle. I will say, however, that for the next couple of series, at least, I do want to take a step back from riding a motorcycle. I think it's just better for me. My main thing when I came back to Thailand for Christmas to see my girlfriend was next year I need a change of scenery and I need a change of pace. And so going to Malaysia and going to Indonesia wouldn't really be a change of scenery or a change of pace because they would still be Southeast Asia and I'd probably still be on the bike. So these are places that I'd love to go to but I might push these back to later in the year or next year or maybe in two years, I don't know, but I would definitely love to go there. The Philippines, now this is a huge one. I mean, there's so much opportunity in the Philippines, not just for the channel, but for me to sort of get my teeth into a brand new country. I've never been there before. They speak English and it's still in Southeast Asia, but I do think it would definitely be a change of pace. Um, South Korea, I've always wanted to go to Korea. It just looks vibrant, it looks interesting. So that's on the cards. Same with Japan as well, same reason. An amazing country. Everybody raves about it. I've never been and it would be a, a cultural change of pace and a change of scenery for sure. I would love to go to Japan. Nepal, I think it would be incredible and I would love to do some trekking up in the Himalayas for sure. Next up is Ireland. I would love to go to Ireland. Um, obviously, I'm English, but with a name like Paddy Doyle, I think I would fit in. <laughs> and there's just the whole coastline, the green rolling fields, the beautiful and friendly people. I think it would be a great series to go to Ireland. Um, I would love to sort of discover some of the roots of my family as well. I'd also really love to go to New Zealand. New Zealand is such a bucket list for me. It just looks incredible. It's all about going at the right time of year and in the right way. I don't know how I would do that yet. I would have to sort of sit down and think about it. And that goes for everywhere on this list. Wherever we go, I don't really just wanna go there willy-nilly and make videos um, with no structure, no plan, no concept. Everywhere I go on Next Level Adventures, I want to sort of be able to put it into a box. So with Thailand, it was, can we visit every province out of the 77? And can we drive from the very north to the very south in Vietnam. In Laos, it was kind of just about, let, let's just go and get completely lost, and hence the name, Lost in Laos. Same with cruising Cambodia. But I would prefer, like, if I go to the Philippines or Japan or Nepal or, or Ireland or New Zealand, to go there um, with, a, with a kind of interesting challenge, uh, a goal to achieve, and that helps everything kind of stay within the brand of next level adventures. You know, instead of just going somewhere and making all of the same old, same old videos and not really standing out and not really building a brand around me and the channel 
uh, and future proofing us hopefully um, is, is kind of what I'm thinking so New Zealand would be great but I would have to think why would I go there you know and how would I do it Iceland if we go to Ireland we will only be like an hour flight away from Iceland the land of fire and ice one of the most beautiful countries in the world massive bucket list country for me let's get to South America a huge continent that I've never been to. I've been all across Central America, Mexico, Nicaragua, Honduras, etc. But I've never been to South America. I'd love to go to Peru. I've recently been watching Backpacking Bananas. She is a British travel vlogger and she's just spent like three months in Peru. And it, it just looks really up my street. The same goes with Colombia and the same goes with Mexico. Even though I have been to Mexico, I rushed through it and I went from the north to the south in about two or three weeks. So I really didn't get to see most of the country and I'd love to go back. Canada, oh my God, I would love to go to Canada. It looks amazing, looks beautiful. I can't actually drive a car. I've never taken a driving lesson in my life. And I don't think Canada would be very traveler friendly without a car. I mean, I could do it on a motorbike, but that would be kind of crazy. It's so big and so cold. Um, obviously the summer's quite nice. I don't know how I would do Canada, but I would love to go for sure. Same with South Africa as well. What a beautiful looking country and coastline. But then, so these are all the countries, okay, that I would love to go to, all right? Um, they would be the bucket list for me. They all have something that I want. Nature, mountains, coastline, beautiful food, interesting cultures, and yeah, I would love to go to all of these countries. However, and this is why I wanted to show you visually this, there's also a category called where YouTube rewards you. And now these are just some examples of countries that when travel vloggers go there, those videos tend to do much better because they're in that country. YouTube has certain de demographics that watch YouTube more than other countries. So for example, the main one is the Philippines. For some reason, everybody who goes to the Philippines, if they go from Thailand, if they go from uh, wherever they're from basically, if they go to the Philippines and they make Philippine travel vlogs, you've probably seen them if you're familiar with the Philippines, you know, going to the malls, eating Jollibee, and you know, just all of the usual samey samey videos. You go to the Philippines, you make those videos, you, you title them the same way that everybody titles them, and the thumbnail's the same with the Filipino flag. They get clicked on by Filipinos. Of course, people who are traveling to the Philippines as well, foreigners, will be looking for content on YouTube to sort of plan and help their trip. So obviously you do get international uh, viewership as well, but predominantly it's massive in the Philippines. The only problem with that is it can blow up your channel um, with Filipinos, which short term is great. You know, you can get 30,000 subscribers in a couple of months, maybe more if you're lucky and you work hard. Um, but those subscribers will be Filipinos. And when you leave the Philippines, they're less likely to, to continue watching, which can hurt your algorithm position later. So that's why I've always put the Philippines off. I wanted to grow my channel to a certain size before I went because, you know, if you go there with 2,000 subscribers and you leave with 50,000 subscribers, well, now you have 48,000 subscribers who come from one country, um, which isn't great if you're a travel channel. Um, you want to kind of diversify and spread your audience across um, as many countries as you can, but you want to try and focus on the Western countries that sets you up better for things like AdSense and how much money you get paid per, per month and things like that. So although the Philippines is really tempting um, and it is on my list of places to go, I will have to sort of make sure that when I go there, I do it in a way that's in brand with next level adventures. I definitely want to go to the Philippines, but I want to go there with an idea um, and get to know the country rather than just go there and make the same kind of videos that everybody makes. So expect us to go to the Philippines for sure. I don't know when maybe this year um what i'll have to do by the way is sit down and look at all of the countries that kind of are in both lists so if a country is showing up in both of these lists where i would love to go and where youtube would want me to go for a good audience reflection if they're in both lists then this is a good example right this is a good country 
like go there Paddy because you love to go there and it will be great for your YouTube channel so um, YouTube loves it if you go to Malaysia the Malaysian audience love to watch foreigners navigate their country and eat their food I've seen people do really well in South Korea go over there and blow up because I think maybe there was a very few or seldom travel vloggers in Korea because of COVID and stuff and I've seen people do really well going over there. Nepal, again, there's a huge population of locals there and they must love YouTube because it seems like most people who go to Nepal enjoy a massive influx of views and subscribers and that's great. So again, if I went there, I would go there, I think, on a big adventure. It's really easy to have an adventure in Nepal. It's quite small, it's full of mountains. And I mean, how could you not have an adventure in a place that is full of the top 10 tallest mountains in the world? Indonesia is another one. Again, the locals love to watch foreigners traverse their country. Same with Pakistan and same with India. There are more examples of countries that do really well in, for travel vloggers. So let's talk about 2023 channel goals. Where would I like this channel to be at the end of this year? Well, the first one is kind of a little bit vain, but I would love to reach 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2023. Roughly, we would need 75,000. So by no stretch of the imagination, that's gonna be quite difficult to do. But I think if we work hard and we go to three or four new countries this year, we can do it. Let's do it in the right way and let's see if we can get to 200K. The next one for the channel is I want to try and create 100 videos for the YouTube channel this calendar year. Now, if I was just doing episodic 10 part series, we'd probably get 40 or 50. So the other 40 or 50 videos will be, like I said before, those little YouTube videos, those smaller, more specific videos about a food or an experience that's unique in the country that we're in. These help me not only upload more content, but bring in more views, bring in more subscribers and build the channel. And I think I can do that if I create at least 100 videos, which will be a challenge. I think we can do it, it's every three days. Right now I'm slowing down and I have been slowing down in January and December, one video every five days, but that was because I wanted to be able to give myself a little bit of a breather and to move into a little semi-permanent base to work on some behind the scene things, which I'll share with you in a second as well. I'd also like to create three new travel guides or three eBooks. I have quite a few on my website that I sell and they're in the descriptions of all of my videos. And I'll be honest with you guys, okay? The eBooks and the travel guides that are selling quietly, passively in the background do really well. And during high season, we just finished, I mean, I couldn't believe how many we sold. You know, these are guides that I wrote nine months ago, six months ago, and that are still selling every day and that people are using. And so we'll be writing some more. I have a few ideas. I think I want to do one specifically on Bangkok and specifically on the islands of Thailand, you know, touching on all of the islands because I missed out Phuket as well as a bunch of other islands that I want to include in an ebook and a few others along the way because this all just helps with the business and the passive income that helps to support the channel and maintain us on the road in 2023. I'd also, and this is kind of why I've come into this um, situation, which is not being on the road for a few weeks because I want to be able to sit down and create a video course and I want to sell this passively again on my website because I've amassed quite a lot of information and knowledge and experience when it comes to YouTube, video making, video editing and uploading videos to YouTube and how to maximize and how to do it right and how to do it efficiently. How do I knock out three videos a week and you know bring in views and revenue and things like that and I've just decided that instead of doing videos on my YouTube channel which let's face it isn't the main source of interest with my audience. My audience wants to see me and Dreamy or me and Zelda or me and whatever in a country having experiences and having adventures. If I was to make a video on YouTube about how to make videos, I don't think it would get much traction. So instead, 
I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna write, film, edit, and launch a video course in the next few months. Hopefully in February. It would be great to launch in February. And again, it will be for sale and it will be a passive income stream for me. They won't sell very many. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll sell a few every month, but compound that with travel guides and AdSense and brand deals. It all adds into the pot and keeps us on the road. Let's talk about personal goals. Forget the YouTube channel. What do I want to achieve this year? This is really important because if I can maintain and achieve these goals, then it will also, you know, help the channel because I was struggling at the end of 2022 to say the least. So here's some personal goals. I want to get healthy and I want to maintain that because I'll be honest with you, lifestyle on the road for me isn't healthy. I'm quite lazy. I eat whatever I can find whenever I'm hungry. It's normally whatever is around. It's not always the most healthy option. And after a long day driving, a long day's adventuring, in the evenings, I typically grab a couple of beers and sit in my hotel room and just mong out and have a few beers. And you compound that with riding a motorcycle most days, you do get unhealthy, you do put on weight. And of course, I tried to counteract that recently. When I went into Northern Thailand and into Laos for 30 days, I ran 5K and I lost three kilos and I felt much better. But then fatigue and laziness came back and I just got back on the beers and I put a little bit of weight back on. And so I wanna get healthy, healthy mind, healthy body, and I wanna maintain that, okay? And there's ways that we're gonna do that, which I'll talk about here. I also wanna maintain and get happier. At the end of 2022, guys, I don't think I was in a very good place. When I came back from Cambodia, and I drove back to Bangkok, I just realized that I didn't really have many friends and I don't have healthy relationships with people that I want to have relationships with. And I just felt like I'd been working too hard, traveling too much and not taking any time to absorb things, not taking any time for me. And I just wasn't very happy. Even though I have this, on the face of it, very, glamorous lifestyle of traveling the world on a motorcycle making youtube videos and climbing mountains and all these things on the face of it it does look amazing but the reality is i just i don't think i'm very happy actually um especially at the end of the year finishing the provinces was amazing and vietnam was an adventure and laos was great i mean everywhere i went was great but in the background especially in the evenings when i can gather my thoughts they weren't always the happiest thoughts. And so I wanna get happier because I want my content to be more upbeat and more happy. So that's my goal. Stop being a miserable bastard. <laughs> I also wanna create a base of operations. Now this one here is an Airbnb that I've rented for a couple of weeks, but this is not a base. This is just a temporary, temporary room. I've put my clothes on the coat hangers and I have my toothpaste and my toothbrush in the bathroom. Kind of feel at home now for the first time in two years. But, you know, this year, I do want to make a base of operations, I've called it here. This isn't somewhere that I'm going to live. This is going to be just somewhere that I can leave things and store things. And if I buy something online, I can ship it to that address. And it's somewhere that I can come in 2023 to sort of get away from life on the road. I will spend six, seven, eight months of the year away in different countries filming. But when I come back to this base, it will be somewhere that I can just rest and edit and maintain my fitness and maintain my, hopefully, happier mood. <laughs> I also wanna try three things this year that scare me, okay? I wanna try and push myself a little bit. It's very easy, especially as you get older, to get stuck in your ways and not to try new experiences because they're dangerous, scary, or I mean, what's the point, Paddy? You just, I mean, you're not gonna get anything from this. You know, just relax and you're getting old, take care of yourself, don't get yourself into mischief. But actually, I do wanna get myself into mischief this year and I do wanna learn some new things about me and what I'm capable of and you can only do that when you sort of get out of your comfort zone and you try new things. So for example, 
I'm thinking about the idea of daily vlogging, not all year, but maybe for a month. Maybe in October or November later in the year, I might daily vlog me in a country or in a city for the creative challenge. Because the idea of filming and editing a video every day, that scares me, that sounds crazy. And I'm inspired by people like Keys One, and I saw recently Chris Parker vlogged every day for a month in Bangkok as well. And I just thought that that would be a fun and scary challenge. So in 2023, for at least a month, expect a daily vlog, which is quite scary and exciting to think about. I also like to try other creative challenges. I'd like to try doing stand-up comedy. I'd love to sort of go to a workshop and learn it and maybe stand up and do some stand-up comedy somewhere. I probably will be terrible and I'll probably die on stage, but this is the point of trying things to scare you because you will push yourself out of your boundary, you will learn new things and you will develop as a person doing those things. So I don't know if I'll share this on my channel, maybe my Instagram, I don't know, but at some point in 2023, I will, I will be doing different things that challenge me mentally as well as physically. And, and this is the third one, I want to start doing sort of different types of videos where I talk to you more candidly, just like this. Now, I've already appeared on a podcast. I went on the Tiger podcast and it was a 90 minute interview with Jay. And we talked about all sorts of things about YouTube, starting the channel, behind the scenes. And, you know, when I listened to that podcast back and I started getting comments from, you know, you guys and messages, it, it really left a positive taste in my mouth. Like, it's nice to open up, it's nice to share and be more unedited because my content's so edited that I think it's time that I start doing videos like this. It's nice to sort of bring you in a little bit closer to me because I think that's more value for you guys. Um, it makes you feel maybe like you know me a little bit better rather than me just having an incredible day or a miserable day on the road. And I also was thinking about buying a gimbal for my phone and doing live streams um, for two reasons. One, it's a really easy way to upload a piece of content. Second reason, I'll just wait for the plane to fly above our heads. And the second reason is there's so many times that I'm at a country and in a destination and it's beautiful and I've already kind of wrapped up my video filming. You know, I might be at Angkor Wat and it's sunset and I actually went there already the day before and filmed, but I just went back to sort of enjoy it without my camera. It would be so easy just to sort of whap up, <laughs> whap up. <laughs> it would be just so easy to pick up the camera and start live streaming to show you some of the places that I'm at real time, sort of teasing what's coming up, showing you a night market or, or a fun, unique experience that's happening in real time on set on one of my future experiences and adventures. It's also a great opportunity to talk to you guys because right now I'm talking, you're listening and I can't hear you back. And in a live stream, you can interact much more. And I've always been scared of podcasts and unedited content and doing live streams because I feel like I'm just too much of a control. I'm <laughs> See, these are all the times that I mess up when I speak that I cut out, you know, and I like to present myself as best I can. And so when I edit my videos, I can cut all those terrible slip ups and mistakes and times I trip over or whatever. I cut all that out. Um, and so with live streams and podcasts, it's kind of a one take, that's it. So that's why I want to try and do some more interviews, podcasts and live streams because it scares me and I think it would be good to develop that side of my brain. Right, that was a little sit down video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know we didn't say exactly where we're going to go, but I think if you go back to my slide, if I just go back quickly, if you look at all of the flags that we talked about, if you look at all of the places that I would love to go and then if you look at the place where YouTube rewards you, we're probably going to be going to the ones that match, you know, like the Philippines is in both, Malaysia's in both, Korea's in both, Nepal's in both, Indonesia's in both. So actually, the more I'm looking at this, 
the more I'm thinking, I don't just want to go to where YouTube rewards me. I want to go to the countries that I want to go to, regardless if I think YouTube's going to reward me or not, because I need to sort of stand away from doing the typical loop that everybody does and making all of the same videos that everybody makes. I want to stand out. I want to separate myself. So what I will say is what I'm going to do is I'm actually tomorrow going to sit down and I'm going to Google when is the best time of year to go to this country. And then I'm going to commit and I'm going to put that down in my diary and we're going to go to there. Because I don't want to go to the Philippines during the monsoon. I don't want to go to Nepal during the monsoon. I don't want to go to New Zealand in the winter. I don't want to go to Canada in the winter. I don't want to go to um, Ireland in the middle of winter. You know, I want it to be quite sunny and pleasant to be outside because I shoot most of my content outside. Um, so yeah, I don't know where we're going to be going, but we'll be going somewhere around these maps, these locations. Have a fantastic 2023. Whatever your personal goals are, I hope you achieve them. And I hope you get to travel this year as well. And please check out the sponsor Rosetta Stone and look at the languages and I hope they align with some of the destinations that you're planning to go to and help you learn some of the language. So thank you again for watching. I hope you have a great 2023. Thanks to Rosetta Stone. And yeah, I'll see you very soon from somewhere beautiful. <laughs>